Today we're going to be looking at an animation system inside 3ds Max, specifically Biped, which a long time ago used to be part of the Character Studio tool set that you could buy and install, but now is included in 3ds Max and has been for quite a while. So if I want to get to the Biped system, first I'm going to go to the Create tab, because again I want to create something, and we're going to go all the way to the right to Systems. Under the Systems tab, under Standard, we will find Biped. So when we click on the biped tab, we'll automatically see a couple of things come up. How we want to create biped, the structure, the root name, if we want to change it by default is BIP01. If we want to change that to something else, um, the body type, there are other certain types, uh, skeleton, a more male looking skeleton or biped, female looking biped and classic. I personally stick with skeleton because I'm usually using it to animate a character, and so that's just what I go with. And then we have the structure of the biped. If we want it to have arms, how many neck links, so on and so forth. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click and drag in my scene somewhere, click, hold, and drag upwards to create my biped. And once I've created my biped, if I want to change it, you would think that I need to go into my Modify tab because I want to modify my biped. But this is a system that works a little bit differently. So instead of going to the Modify tab, we're actually going to go to the Motion tab. And here with my biped selected, any part of my biped selected, I see a list of parameters that I can change. If after we create the biped, we want to change the structure of it, how many bones or, or whatnot, we would go into under biped, we would go to figure mode. Figure mode is going to take us kind of back where we did when we created it, that we can come back into the structure. And again, we have the parameters that we had when we created the biped. So let's say for example, that I wanted to have five fingers. So I could come to fingers and go to five. And if I want, three finger length, so I'm more like a realistic finger. Oh, not, not four, that's too many. The same with toes. By default, it gives us three toe lengths, but only one toe. So if we wanted to change that, so we had five toes, maybe our character is walking around barefoot. So what I usually use, since most characters that I've animated have shoes on, I just go with one toe length, and one toe. Okay, I can change <coughs> I can change if I want them to have ponytail or if I want them to have a tail. Maybe this is like part animal. Leg links, so a normal human leg would have three links, but if we wanted something like a centaur or some other animal type leg, then we could have four. Spine links, how many links I want in the torso. I'm going to change that to three. Neck links, if we have a big long neck, if we have a giraffe neck or something like that, we can definitely change that, but I'm going to stick with one. And here we have maybe a basic biped that we'll play around with for a little bit. Okay, once I'm done changing the structure of my biped, I need to make sure that I click out of figure mode. If I don't, I can't animate anything. Well, while we're here, let's, let's talk about one thing. We have copy and paste. What this allows us to do is if we're changing the size of some of the things in our biped. So maybe I want this arm to be a little fatter, maybe a little longer to fit a model that we have. I want to be exact on the other side. If it's, a, if it's the other side is the same, I want to be exact. Well, copy and paste allows me to do that. If I have an array, one thing I want to do is create a collection because I can save these collections and use them on any one, of the, any one of the bipeds that I want. So I created a collection, and then we see that we have posture and pose. 
So if I click on posture and then copy the posture, I'll see that I have the bone that's selected, the forearm is red in our little view here, meaning that the posture of this bone has been saved and I can apply it, I can or paste it, or I can paste it to the opposite side. I can do the same thing if I have multiple bones selected. So maybe I'll select this, this entire arm and I can delete this if I want to. I can delete the pose if I want, or I can uh, create another one. So let's just say just copy this pose. And now we see that the entire arm is red because I've copied the entire arm. If I want to paste it to the opposite side so I have an exact replica, then I can paste posture opposite. And what we see is now my arm is the same on both sides. So that's really handy if we're trying to get ready to skin a character and the proportions are different than our basic biped. It's really, it, it's really a time saver to be able to do that. Okay, so we've talked about how to create a biped. We've talked about how to change the structure after we've created the biped. Let's go ahead and turn figure mode off. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a little pose on this guy. Now, usually if we're working with animations, we want to create an animation without really having to think about creating a key. We can come to auto key here, which will automatically key any attribute that is animatable across our timeline. But it doesn't work all that well with a biped. And the issue is, like I can come in and create keys, but it doesn't work exactly like it does with if I had a shape and I just came here and moved it and then it would automatically create a key at zero. And again, the issue is because it doesn't work exactly like other animation systems. It's its own system. And so we're gonna come into the motion tab again, and we'll see key info, key framing tools, layers. We have all kinds of things that we can use to help us with our animation. So if we want to set a key, I'm gonna come somewhere and set a key, set a key here. And I can still play around. It will still create keys. Like if I come here, create a key. But a lot of my tools for my biped are actually in the motion tab. Whether I want to set a key, set a planted key, and we'll go over all that. If we want, if we want to manipulate sub animations or create layers. So here we have basic biped. And we have a couple little animations on there, or a couple little keys anyway. Maybe we want his leg to come up higher. Okay. Let me come back down here. Now let's go over a couple of very, very basic tools. One of the tools that we talked about just a minute ago under keyframe or key info was planted keys, sliding keys, and free key. What a planted key will do is when we have a planted key on, we saw that we had a little dot, it might be hard to see, we have a little dot on our foot. What that means is that if our biped moves, our foot's not going to. So if I were to, to select the root of the biped, which is the diamond in the middle of the pelvis called bit 001 by default, if you had two in there, then it would be bit 002, so on and so forth. If I move my biped, if I could select the right key, or the right bone rather, and I move the biped, we can see that the key that I had planted, or the foot that I had planted isn't moving. But the other foot that isn't planted is moving. And when we continue to move it, if we move it outside of its constraints, it's not going to stretch. Instead, it will try to follow Try to stay in place as much as it can. But if you move it beyond the extents, it will move. But it looks like it's extremely straight. So if we were to come to the other foot and do the same thing, create that planted key, again, we can choose our root bone. And now both of my feet are planted. Both of them want to stay there. And I can do the same thing with the hands. Set planted key. Set planted key. 
Now if I try to move my biped, you can see that both feet and both hands are trying to stay in place. Is the set planted key available for every bone? Well, we have it for our thigh, but we don't have it for our spine. We don't have it for our head. We do have it for our forearm. So we have our appendages, our legs and our hands, our, our legs and our arms have that ability, but not every bone does. Another besides set planted key is set sliding key. And what set sliding key does is it works like set planted key in that we can plant our bone, but it does allow us to continue to animate it. So we can see with the set planted key, we know we have a set planted key because it's orange. And we know we have a set sliding key because it's yellow. And really they're just called planted and slided. The set planted and set, set sliding, that's not, that's just what's what we did, we set one. Okay, so if I have a sliding key, I can now come and move that and it will still animate. But you see that the set sliding key, when the foot gets to that point, our planted key is planted from that sliding key. So I'm going to, Let's see, set a planted key here, and then come here and set a, sli sli a sliding key so we can see what happens. So what we can see is on the set sliding key, on the sliding key, our foot is in place, our planted key keeps it in that place, and then our sliding key allows it to be animated again. We're allowed to move it. The next one is a free key. And setting a free key means that there's no, it's not being planted at all. It's not going to stay in position. So if I were to come over to this planted key and set it as a free key, now we can see that my color, my orange has gone away. It's now white. And when I come to my sliding key to where I was with my planted key, you can see in between it moves. So it's no longer planted. And then of course the sliding key allows it to be animated again. This can be very useful if we're doing like a walk cycle where when we have a foot hitting the ground, we want it to stay on the ground for the duration of the movement. And then we can set a sliding key. If for example, our character is running and they slip or they try to stop and they slide on the ground, then we can set a sliding key. And then the free key we could use when that leg starts coming back up, we can set a free key so it's allowed to be animated freely. We also have anchor left arm, right arm, left and right leg. This works like the planted key, except when we anchor them, it will set one for us automatically. And all animation that was there whether even if there was a free key, it no longer applies to those appendages, whatever we have the anchors for. We can turn those off and on, so it will continue to move. This is really good if we have a certain range and we don't know where we want it to be set or not, or if we want a sliding key or if we want a planted key, then we can anchor it and see where it looks good. The next thing let's look at is layers. What layers allows us to do here is if we have an animation on a character already, we can add a layer so that we can modify an animation that's already there. And we can do that by selecting a key and modifying it and whatnot. But if we have a long animation or if we have a lot of keys on, on different parts of the biped, then that can get kind of tedious. But we can use a layer to overwrite and modify animations that are already present. So what I'm gonna do is I think that I have a biped, an animation file, and uh, by default, an animation file on a biped is called a bib file. I'm gonna click this one. Okay, let's say okay. And here we can see that we have a little animation. Let's see if we can play it, see what it looks like. Oh, and here we can play with some of the keys. I can show you what some of those sliding keys do and whatnot.
Okay. <clears throat> so first, what you see is that there are a lot of animation keys here. Every bone that you select has a key per frame. That's a lot to work with, especially if you have hundreds of bones and thousands of, of frames and you've got a key per frame. That's a lot to work with. Well, it's okay if you delete some of these if you need to. So let's say, for example, we can see at the beginning that we kind of slide before we move. So what I'm going to do here is set a plant key. And this is another, uh, uh, we talked about using the anchor. This is a good time we can use that anchor. And we can say, oh, we've got that lit. OK, so we're going to say it about frame 10. Nope, sorry. On frame 10, I want my sliding key to turn, or my planted key to turn into a free key. So my foot isn't going to move during these zero, uh, 1 and zero, 09. So I can come in and I can actually delete these keys between 0 and 9. Then I'm going to apply that planted key, come to frame 10. Apply that planted key. And now you can see that my foot from frame 0 to frame 10 doesn't move. Now we can see at frame 11 it pops. So let's delete a few in there and make a smoother transition. And then here, when we're placed back down, about there, let's have another planted key. And that little skiff right there. So I'm going to say at frame 30 is where we want to release our planted key again. I'm going to set a planted key. And what we see is now my foot. And I'm looking at the blue foot here. Now I can see that my planted key between 20 and 30. Okay, so I don't want to go through this whole thing. This is just one example of how we can use the anchors and the planted keys and the sliding keys. If you wanted to, for instance, you had someone that, or you're animating a character that has their hand on a table and you want that hand to be on the table, and you could use planted keys for that as well. Okay, so we have an animation that we brought in and um, what I did was went to load file under biped so I can load a bit file and it will look for a biped file or we can do an STP. Uh, by far more common is biped and you can load it in that way. Now what I want to do is maybe there's some part of this animation that I don't like. Maybe I want an arm to be different at, at a certain part of it. And I know this animation looks a little silly and that's okay. We're just looking at examples of how we can use tools. So what I can do is I can create an animation layer. And what this allows me to do is to overwrite the animation that's underneath it. So our original animation, then we created an animation layer. And now we have a second layer of animation on top of the original layer. And here, what I can do is I can adjust animation. So let's say, for example, we've got this arm here. I like that. I like this motion here. But I don't really like it being waved so high there. So maybe I'll come create a key here, and maybe instead of it being real high, I want it to be lower, maybe here. Then what I can see is my animation, the adjustment. I see the original animation here. And then of course I can see the animation that I've done. And because I've created this key, we call it like a source key or an original key, we saw they come back together. Now if I like this, I can come in and collapse this. I can bake it down. So let's see what happens when we do that. Here we can see that the animation that I adjusted in the animation layer is now in the original animation. Now one thing to keep in mind is if we have anchors, when we create a layer, those anchors aren't taken into account unless in that layer we have the retarget whichever we have, right arm, left arm, left leg, right leg, if we have those selected, then it will 
take those into account after we update them in the layer. So we've gone over a couple of things with biped. The next video we're going to go over is using biped and a mesh to skin a mesh and control it using biped. But what I would recommend is come and play with some of these settings. Create a biped, move it around, save some of the, the motion, see, see what kind of interesting thing that you can do. Use some layers to adjust it. Maybe we'll copy and paste posture. We didn't really go over pose, so let's go over that real quick. And that's just as easy as if I want to save an entire pose, then I can copy a pose and we can see that everything is red. And then I can paste it somewhere. I can also paste the opposite. So it works kind of like posture, but instead it does the entire biped. So yeah, play around with that. And in the next video, we'll talk about how we can take a biped and a mesh that we want to animate and skin it. Until then, have fun.